Kuzampula and welcome to another episode of Face to Face. I'm Tenzin Laden, your host. In this episode, we are going to talk about traditional folk songs. And when we hear about traditional songs and musics, Abdopi comes in our mind because he's not just an ordinary singer, rather he is a nation's treasure and it is a great loss for us Bhutanese to lose a master of traditional musics and songs. So to portray him, we have Jimmy Drupa here. He's also a great musician. He is once a student of Abdopi. So let's ask him about him. Tell me about Abdopi. Who is he? To you and to Bhutanese in general. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, Abdopi, I think, uh, actually needs no introduction because for the past many decades, uh, exceeding over five decades, his name has been a household name mm -hmm. in all the homes in Bhutan. Uh, as you said, uh, his passing away uh, is a great loss for Bhutan, yes. and not only for Bhutan, for the world at large, mm -hmm. because a musician of his caliber I think, uh, and his age, I think it's not so many that we can name off. And uh, rightfully, he, his loss or his passing away is a great loss for Bhutan. And Abdopel, uh, if I add on, uh, he started as a monk in Punakadzong. And uh, after 18 years or so as a monk, then he became an ex-monk, Gete mm. Tope because he married uh, someone from uh, Nopgang. And then, uh, for his love of music, he left uh, both the, the monkhood and also uh, it did not turn out as a success for his first uh, love. He went on to pursue uh, musical uh, training with some of the best uh, teachers uh, during his time, in particular, uh, Seola Tsam Do uh, Pem Doji. Mm -hmm. Uh, he himself had actually learned uh, music and songs from uh, Seula Jamgen. So the story goes way back. Uh, okay. So before becoming a musician, what was he into? He was more into painting. He started mm -hmm. as a painter. Mm -hmm. And then also he learned uh, uh, about mass dances, mm -hmm. embroidery. Uh, I, Many other things, among which playing the drumming and singing stood at, at his uh, uh, heart. So, how old were you when you first met him? Well, I first heard him over the radio. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was about eight or nine years old. And uh, since then, I tried to find who the singer was and uh, through... Uh, different sources, I came to know that it was somebody called Abdobe. Mm. And finally, when I reached class 7, I was 15 at the time, I left my school in search of Abdobe. The 1st of April 1984, mm. I still remember the date because it happened to be April Fool's Day. When all my friends thought I was joking, I actually was on a serious mission looking for Abdobe. Mm. And I came to Timpu. So did he officially accepted you as his student? Not right away in the beginning. Mm. It was very tough because someone as young as mm. uh, 15 years old and coming oh, all the way from Eastern Bhutan. Old when you yes. Met him. Okay. Uh, I left the school and came to Timpu mm. and I did not speak or understand uh, Dzongka so mm. much. Okay. So the language was a big barrier. Mm. But eventually, uh, because I was determined to learn, so I went on to him almost every weekend and disturb mm. him and he had to you know accept me as a student okay mm. um, how did you know about Abdobe? through radio first of all through radio mm. and yes mostly through radio in mm. those days before that you were not aware of him right? no no i just heard uh, over the radio and um, he's singing on the radio with the drone right? after meeting him what really happened it was so interesting because although I wanted to learn the Dranyan, I did not have one. So I had to actually imitate when he started to play. And he had no 
particular ways of teaching actually. I just had to imitate mm -hmm. and look at his hands, his mouth, his songs, listen to him, look at him and then pick up. You know. So that's basically how you uh, got attached to him and you learned about music, right? Yes. So at at 15, right? When you were 15, you started learning drumming from him. Yes. Okay. So uh, how close were you with him? Well, now when I look back, it's 38 years and four months. Mm. In 30 years? 38 years. 30. Oh, okay. 1984, mm. or May, uh, to be precise. Uh -huh. I first saw him, met him in May 1984. And since then, I've been following him and I've been learning songs from him until the last days of his life. Just two days before he died, he taught me a song again and uh, some kind of a Tashi Dele song, Tashi, okay. uh, concluding song. So it is so many years of uh, attachment uh, together. So it's a really long year of attachments together, right? Yes. So do you have any particular moment that you cherish with him? Oh, so many, so many. Of which uh, our trip to Eastern Bhutan, because Apa mm -hmm. had never been beyond Bhumtang okay. in his life. And in 2003, mm -hmm. I was able to take him to uh, a trip of Eastern Bhutan, including where we performed in mm -hmm. Tashigang, in Sherapti College, in uh, Kaling schools, Wamong schools, and including in my own village, my birthplace in Wong Chilu. Mm. So that trip, uh, particularly at my home, he performed over 17 jungras in one night. 17, 17 jungras in one just night. Just one night? Yes. Uh, we started from about 6 o'clock in the evening mm. and it went on till about 4.30 in the morning. After which I continued for all the people gathered there. Yeah, among the many moments that I cherish is when he was awarded the Druk Tukse Medal on 2nd June 1999 uh, by His Majesty the, uh, the K4 for his uh, musical achievements. It came out as a very uh, special moment both for Appa and for all the musicians in Bhutan because he was awarded the highest medal for his accomplishments as a musician. Mm. And that, those kind of special moments uh, stand out in my memory. So th this particular moment was the most precious one that yes. you always cherish, right? Yes. So uh, I'm sure you must have learned a lot of things from him. But tell me about the thing that you learned from him which had changed your life. First of all, for me in my own personal life, Appa meant everything to me because music to me means everything to me in my life. Uh, I was in particular able to learn so many of the Jungras, especially from the Punaka, Talo or tradition that he was uh, practicing. So. I was fortunate as an Eastern Bhutanese boy mm -hmm. coming into the mainstream of the national songs, you call it, Jungra. Mm -hmm. So in particular, I was able to learn uh, most of his Jungras. So anything you want to say about him which is worth sharing with everyone? When things have come to an end, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, with his passing, as I started in the beginning, uh, Bhutan has lost a great maestro of music yes. and this will leave a big void for many years to come. I'm afraid it may take many, many more decades for the likes of him to uh, dwell on the Bhutanese soil again. So how do you intend to keep his legacy alive? Well, now it's almost two weeks since he passed away. And I have uh, been reflecting, recollecting, and discussing, talking to my friends. And I came to a, a decision where I feel that I must uh, initiate establishment of a foundation called Daupil Foundation. Mm. 
so that his legacy uh, can be carried on. So it's something that I really want to do. <clears throat> so you haven't started, right? Not yet. Is it something you want to do? Yes. yes okay. uh, I hope, basically hope everything goes as planned, sir, and mm -hmm. best wishes for this, oh, whatever you. you are planning about. That's a really good thing, actually. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for your time oh, today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, to the viewers, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our page. I'll see you all next week.